Six new reports on who might be the Phoenix Suns head coach just in Tuesday and Wednesday alone. On today's episode of Locked On Suns, does anybody actually know who's going to coach the Suns next year? You are Locked On Suns, your daily Phoenix Suns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and I'm your host, Brendan Clean, a credentialed media member covering the Suns for the past six seasons, a writer at suns.com, and the host of the Just Basketball Show, wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for making Locked on Suns your first listen each and every day. We're here back on a Thursday with lots of news to go over. Become an everyday or get locked onto your favorite team every single Monday through Friday by hitting follow or subscribe wherever you're finding us. We're free and we're here for you every single day of the week. You can also follow along at Locked on PHX Suns where in addition to the YouTube comment section down below this video, you can also on Twitter drop your thoughts on who you think might indeed become the next head coach of the Suns. Today's show is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. When you enter the promo code locked on NBA, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with your order. Six new reports on who might become the next head coach of the Suns. And we'll go through them. This was just Tuesday and Wednesday. We had a battle of insiders to start things off where all three of the biggest newsbreakers in the NBA said different things about the finalist pool for this Suns opening. All right, so you have within minutes of each other. So something clearly changed. Something clearly was put out there because they all had it at the same time. You had Adrian Wojnarowski saying four finalists. Four. Nick Nurse, Doc Rivers... Jordy Fernandez, and Kevin Young. Then moments after that, you had Sham Sharania, who said five finalists. The same four names that Woj had, but then also Frank Vogel. Then later on in the evening, almost into the night, you had Chris Haynes from Turner saying... Phoenix has yet to reach the final stage of interviewing candidates for its head coaching vacancy and are expected to meet with both Milwaukee associate head coach Charles Lee and Golden State assistant Kenny Atkinson. All right, so that's three. Then you have Dwayne Rankin, the beat reporter for the Arizona Republic, who said five finalists as well, the same ones that uh, Shams had. Vogel, Nurse, Rivers, Fernandez, and Kevin Young. Actually, I don't even think I said, I I don't even think six is enough. You're going to have to decide what you think is a report and what is just uh, some, some information. Then you had Bill Simmons saying on the, on his podcast that the Suns have already zeroed in on Kevin Young, that he's going to be the hire. You had Mark Stein on, in his newsletter say, that Young has received a stamp of approval from Devin Booker, which I will tell you that as the everydayers who listen to this show all of the time already know, I posited that, and that's part of why I've been on the Young, I don't want to say bandwagon as if he's been my necessarily my favorite candidate or the guy that I think should get the job, but that's why I've reiterated time after time that he was a likely candidate to be a, a real possibility here. Because I know that he works Booker out. I know that on the coaching staff, he's the guy from a basketball standpoint that works most closely with Book. If Monty's leaving, you'd think if you're going in-house, the guy who has that relationship is the most important guy. And so it's no surprise to me to hear Mark Stein say that that stamp of approval is there. And to be honest, it is not that much of a surprise to hear that... Um, He might have the job, according to Bill Simmons. Here's the most honest thing. uh, Not honest. The the most um, genuine, no 
frills, straightforward thing that was reported today. And I guess I'm almost, I, this is number seven, so I'm already, or, or eight, I'm already past the six that I said. I don't know how many of these qualify as separate reports, but it was, it was Jake Fisher of Yahoo Sports who said, uh, Phoenix's attempt to replace Monty Williams has been the quietest of the league's undetermined coaching situations. Although former Sixers head coach Doc Rivers is expected to receive consideration from Phoenix's new regime under owner Matt Ishbia. Um, Rivers apparently is sort of the Ishbia guy here. And so I don't think that can be discounted. But I'll tell you one thing that I do think can be discounted. I don't feel like Phoenix, the Suns, the the Haynes report is the one that I get held up on. I don't think that the Suns are going to con- strongly consider Kenny Atkinson. He coached the Brooklyn Nets when, when Kyrie and KD decided to sign with Brooklyn. But he never actually coached Durant. He barely coached Kyrie because Kyrie was hurt and then didn't come to the bubble that season. They fired him before the bubble even started. Then they replaced Jacques Vaughn, who was the interim, all to get to Steve Nash and then eventually back to Jacques Vaughn, but never Atkinson. The idea that Kenny Atkinson is going to come coach Kevin Durant with that history feels like a long shot, feels a little bit suspicious that that would be put out there. And on top of all of this, you have John Gambadoro from Arizona Sports here locally, who... This is not to throw unnecessarily unnecessary shade at Gambo, but the bottom line is that he said Nick Nurse would not be a candidate here, and it very much appears that Nick Nurse is a candidate here and, and, and in fact, a finalist. So take that with a grain of salt. But Gambo reported today that both Vogel and Jordy Fernandez will be interviewing in Phoenix this week which throws yet another wrench and another disagreement among all these different people into the mix because I believe Shams had it that he had the number right, seemingly, that Dwayne Rankin was able to corroborate, but Shams said that they were going to be meeting with Ishbia, James Jones, and other team officials in Michigan later this week. So we don't even know where the hell these things are happening. We don't. We can't even get it in, in line where the meetings are happening, let alone who's meeting and who's actually the most likely candidate. So let's try to read between the lines here. I told you a little bit of what I think as we've gone. Let's start with the Haynes thing because it is the most suspicious. All right. Um, why would there be a, a, a goal of putting out there that the Phoenix Suns have yet to reach the final stage and that they're in fact actually going to add two more new, fresh interviews, first-time interviews with these people. I don't know, but what I would say is that sounds like a negotiating tactic. Um, A negotiating tactic that could benefit uh, anybody that's trying to get more... Anybody that's trying to get on the Sun side, you could you could imagine if one of the coaches likely to be hired were getting a little bit ahead of themselves and maybe playing hardball with the Suns. You could imagine it benefiting the Suns to put out there, you know, actually we have a few more people on our list, so-and-so. So-and-so's agent that, that thinks it's a done deal already. No, we're meeting with a half dozen more people. Your 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 client is, is not a lock to be the head coach here, and so you're going to have to you know, um, capitulate a little bit here and not ask for so much money or whatever it is. That That's one route that you could see. You could also see it from the part of Atkinson or Charles Lee. They've also been people who have interviewed for other jobs. They're both, I believe, finalists for the Milwaukee job. So you could imagine there that if Haynes is plugged into that situation that their agents or their, their representation would benefit from putting it out there. Hey, I have other options. So if you want to hire me, you got to pull the, you know, pull the trigger on this one. You got to make it happen. So that's kind of where I think the Haynes thing comes from. The difference between four versus five finalists, you could easily just imagine Woj had it wrong. I mean, that's not that huge of a thing. Um, 
He also didn't say only four. He didn't say these four are the 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 only, you know, it's going to be one of these four. He didn't put it that way. He just said that they're advancing these finalists um, to meet for interviews in the coming days. He didn't even use the word finalists uh, in the original tweet. He did in a later story. So that one's not as big of a deal. Let's talk in the next segment about if the smoke on Kevin Young means that that's just where this is headed, or if there's one other negotiating tactic the Suns might be pulling by leaking all of this in the first place. First, today's show, guys, brought to you by Bird Dogs. We all received an awesome selection of Bird Dogs to sample these and just in time for summer. I know a lot of you guys are based in Phoenix just like I am, and you know how important breathability, softness, comfort, and fit all are because we are all shorts people here in Phoenix in the summer. Even if you're not, you know, you go to the office, you do your thing, the minute you get home, it's shorts. Weekends, it's shorts. Hanging out with friends and family, it's shorts. And you need something that's going to fit you well, not wear out, and, uh, you know, breathe. Bird Dogs does all those things. They have an underlining layer of basically underwear. You can wear something and then have that and have the shorts. You can just have that be the underwear layer. That is very nice. It is like gym shorts, but in a regular set of shorts, or they also have gym shorts and those are excellent as well, but that is an awesome quality. They are soft. They are, um, bendable, flexible, all the good stuff. Go to birddogs.com, B-I-R-D-D-O-G-S.com slash locked on NBA. When you enter the promo code locked on NBA with your first purchase, They'll give you a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with each and every order. Today's show also brought to you by eBay Motors for a championship team. It's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. And it's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you had need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With their eBay guaranteed fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. I've been on eBay more lately. I had a couple things to sell. I knew we were doing this campaign. I knew eBay Motors was really popular, very uh, user-friendly, and so I made an account. I told you my wheel cover came off. It is somewhere in the depths of downtown Phoenix, which was a, a casualty of my journey to a, a disappointing game six to the Denver loss to the Denver Nuggets, but I've been on there. It has that green check. It tells me, hey, this is the one you need. Here are your options. Pick it, choose it, buy it, go for it. With over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time if you shop at eBay Motors. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, and exclusions apply. Alrighty, so let's talk Kevin Young. Let's talk about Kevin Young. Is it going to be as obvious as it seems? Bill Simmons has no real direct connection to the Phoenix Suns. He has no real reason to report the Suns head coaching search. Like, he's not getting any clout or clicks out of that. They definitely didn't even advertise that they were discussing the Suns in the title or description of the podcast. Like, you kind of just had to click play, and it was like 50 minutes in. So he doesn't have any real reason to, to, to smoke screen anybody here. Uh, Mark Stein getting the reporting that Booker is a fan of Young. You know, there's no real reason to do that. It's not Mark Stein saying, hey, you know, click on my uh, sub stack because I have this big news dump. It, it really wasn't even that, right? So, you know, you lean in that direction and it's sort of like, well, maybe it's just that simple and some of these other insiders just don't have it as firm yet or... We know all the politicking that happens behind the scenes. If Woj has a good relationship, if Shams has a good relationship with somebody that is representing one of these other candidates, well, they don't want to hurt that relationship until Kevin Young has signed on the dotted line. You don't want to go out there and say uh, Kevin Young is the next head coach because, well, maybe Jordy Fernandez's agent is going to get mad at you or Nick Nurse's, in the case of, of Nurse, it's, it's clutch. You don't you know, powerful agency. You don't want to get them on the wrong side. There's all these ways that it could go. I'm inclined to believe that Kevin Young is the front runner at the very least. I think that he is the guy who 
from the jump made sense. His name has been out there each and every step of the process. I told you about the Booker side of things from the beginning. He's obviously has familiarity with Kevin Durant and DeAndre Ayton and Chris Paul and whoever from this current team will be back next season by way of having been here. He has familiarity with somebody like James Jones. And honestly, I read this at the time as well on the day that Monty got fired, but I told you all about, I told the everydayers who were here that show about the ESPN uh, report that Kevin Arnovitz used to do when he still worked there. And he would go through, not team by team, but basically across the whole league on every single coaching staff out there. Who were the guys that other people, other teams, other decision makers see as potential head coaching candidates around the league, right? So you might, he might have gone and asked, hey, Daryl Morey, you know, Doc is your coach. You just hired him. But who, who do you think in X staff might be a good coach? Like that, that was the kind of thing that he did. And Kevin Young's name came up in May, May of 2022. If you remember, he was a fairly legitimate candidate to coach the Sixers in 2020 after um, Brett Brown got fired. He was a legitimate candidate, a finalist for the Wizards job last year. I believe he was a decently uh, high quality considered candidate for the Utah Jazz job last year. So this is not out of nowhere, right? Um, And Kevin Young had it, or I'm sorry, Kevin Arnovitz had it in that article that James Jones is, or Kevin Young is well known for having relationships up and down the organization including with James Jones, including with Monty Williams, including with the players. And he's sort of seen as this expert communicator, right? This expert relationship guy within the franchise. In addition to the head coaching experience he has overseas and in the then D League, which obviously now the G League, as as long ago as more than a decade. His first head coaching job was in, I believe, the United Kingdom when he was like 26 years old. He then had a couple of different jobs in the G League as long as 12 years ago, 13 years ago was his first one. So all of that is to say the guy is qualified. The guy is well-regarded. The guy has been a finalist in other spots. That all makes sense. That's why I think he's the front runner. But I think there's another part of this as well that we maybe should consider. What about Ty Lue? Is that just... A pipe dream? Was that never real? Where has his name been? It's only been a week, but there really have not been any new reports about Ty Lue in about a week. We know that the Bucks were reportedly interested in him. You would imagine that the Sixers would probably have interest in him. And you would think, depending on what the Celtics do, we're not positive what they will do. It, it appears that they will keep Joe Missoula, but you never know. You would think they would have some interest in Ty Lue. Any team that has championship aspirations but it is making a coaching change, Lou would likely be at or near the top of their list. Same reason that he is with the Suns. His proven track record with game planning in the playoffs, getting through to star players, being adventurous and, and, and creative and risky with the schemes that he draws up, depending on the opponent, depending on who's available on his squad, all that stuff. Where did he go? Is there a chance that the Suns leaking all of this is part of a negotiation to get Ty Lu to, to broadcast it out there? Hey, we're moving forward. These are our four, five names. One of these guys is going to be our head coach. They're meeting with our owner. They are... For all intents and purposes, the front runners, the fr- the finalists, whatever word you want to use. Hey, Clutch. You know, hey, Ty Lue's representation. Hey, Clippers. If you want to get this done, now's the time. I think it very well could be that. I think it could be both, you know. You have to move forward. If Ty Lue is being a little stubborn, if the Clippers are refusing to kind of engage on a contract extension or a new contract, which we know he wants, to try to wait it out. You know, there's no reason for them to get to hurry up and start negotiating with Lou because what if those negotiations turn sideways and all of a sudden you have an angry coach on your hands right when everybody's trying to hire? 
If you can drag this out, if you're if you're the Clippers, if you're Steve Ballmer, if you're Lawrence Frank, who runs their basketball operations, then you might be able to pull this until mid June, and a bunch of teams have already hired coaches, and then it's like, okay, well, Ty's coming back. We'll figure out the contract a different season. Nobody has a, a vested interest in getting rid of Ty Lue if they're on the Clippers. And if you're Ty Lue, and it seems like what you mostly just want is a new contract to stay with the Clippers, you're not really in, an, in a hurry to jump ship either. And so maybe part of what the Suns are doing here is to say, last call. I even think this is maybe very um, you know tinfoil hat, galaxy brained of me. But I even think there's a, a potential that... Part of what's going on here with the missed city or like uh, where the meetings are happening between Shams and Gambo is part of this. I kind of think if if this was a full on like we're done here, they just need to meet with the owner to get the seal of approval. The sort of, you know, final yes. I kind of think it might be in. Michigan, because we know HB has been here a ton the past little while. He was at the Mercury home opener even after the Suns got eliminated, and I would imagine he's been back home since then on Sunday. I don't think he would want to come out here just to mess around with negotiating tactics with Ty Lue and uh, and the Clippers. And so I wonder if, honestly, the fact that the meetings are in Phoenix— I don't know what that does. I, I'm not sure if they're going to include him, I think is part of what I'm getting at here. But I'd be very interested to see, do they actually fly people out to Michigan when it's all said and done? Anybody. Or does Ishbia come here? Or does Ishbia not come here and these meetings are just like another round but not exactly quite finalists yet? I think that's sort of where we are with all of this. It wouldn't surprise me if we had a new coach in place here in Phoenix by Monday. But it also wouldn't surprise me if, you know, Monday morning or even sooner than that, we get another round of Ty Lue rumors. I think that's what's going to come next. Let's talk about the risk and reward here. Because, again, I think it's both. You have to move forward with the coaching search, even if you do have the sneaky idea in your back pocket that you might still get your number one plan A truly top candidate in Lue. You have to move forward. The Suns have two very different paths they can go down. What's the risk and reward? What's the good and bad of both routes? Talk about that next first today's show. Brought to you as well by the FanDuel Sportsbook. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. I love the pre-made same game parlays at the FanDuel Sportsbook. I love just how many prop bets and different things to bet on within each game that they have. I also love the fact that they have updated, consistently updated, WNBA game lines. We have the Los Angeles Sparks 14 and a half point underdogs on the road. Uh, sorry, at home against the the championship favorite Las Vegas Aces. And we also have the Mercury. Home again on Thursday night, two and a half point favorites over the Minnesota Lynx as BG continues to get back into game shape. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Official FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Let's go here with a couple last thoughts on these finalists, if we take it at face value that they have not fully decided on Kevin Young yet, that they are not just trying to get Ty Lue and the Clippers' attention, but that these four to five names are legitimate, and we'll say five, because um, Gambo had it that Frank Vogel is in fact coming, so that's the fifth, and Dwayne Rankin had that as well. So five. Let's say those five names are the, the genuine, it's going to be one of those five, but it's not for sure Kevin Young. It's basically a split between three guys of one variety, two guys of another variety. You have Nurse, Vogel, and Rivers, who are all guys who have done this job before for quite a long time. In in Rivers' case, you know, two plus decades. Vogel, more than one decade. Nurse, about half a decade. All three have won championships. 
and all three, I think, to be honest, they also have in common is they're more defensive guys. Then on the other side, the other two names, Jordy Fernandez, Kevin Young. Those are offensive minds, I think, primarily, although Kevin Young is a little hard to pin down. I don't think he's one of those guys that has the reputation of being necessarily a specialist. But the higher you get up in the associate and, and assistant coaching ranks, you often don't have a specialty because you've done enough stuff, you've been in enough staff situations that you can do it all, which you have to do to be a head coach, obviously. Those two guys are younger, have not been head coaches before, have been on a few different staffs, have been interviewed and been finalists before. And I think, you know, again, lean offense. The everydayers are going to know where I stand on this, but it's worth repeating. I would put, personally, both of the assistants over all three of the uh, of the retreads. Kevin Durant, there's been an article circulating of Kevin Durant giving kudos and props to Nick Nurse, I believe last season, just saying that the defensive scheming that Nurse is able to do keeps scorers up at night, I think was the phrasing there. So, okay, you know, that's that's sitting there. Nurse is a well-respected guy. Obviously, Doc Rivers, well-respected guy. Frank Vogel, you can you could do a lot worse than all three. I would put Doc fifth. I don't I just don't I don't think a championship coach should be rolling the dice on that again, considering his recent track record between the Clippers and the Sixers was generally underperforming, all things considered. But I would put the the younger guys on on the top of the list, both. I mean, I think right now I would have Kevin Young, Jordy Fernandez, Nick Nurse, Frank Vogel, Doc Rivers. That would be my order. And there's obviously ways around it in both in both directions, right? If you hire the retread, there's always the possibility that you keep Kevin Young on staff, which is something that Gambo has has brought up on the radio recently. There's all, always the possibility that you could find the next up and comer, hire them, so that you have a little bit more progressive thinking and, and cr- creativity on staff rather than you know more old fashioned perspectives. And on the other side, if you do hire one of the younger assistants who is a l- more of a risk, right? Then you can you can bring on somebody who has a, a lot of maybe a past head coach to be the lead assistant or a long time assistant type of person to come be a lead assistant here. You know, all of these things are common in the league, and they're all ways to sort of insulate yourself, diversify your staff. That's all right there. But the reason, once again, that I lean toward the younger guys is that I just feel like the risk is there, but almost always the better reward comes when the team when teams in the Suns position think a little bit outside of the box, allow themselves to be uncomfortable a little bit, and try to find somebody who is truly innovative, who is going to bring a truly new perspective and and voice to the locker room, to the huddle, to the staff. That is when the best magic gets made in these situations. You've even heard today, right, that Giannis uh, on Wednesday, that Giannis wants Adrian Griffin, who's actually on was on Nurse's staff the past few years. That's an assistant coach. He wants him more than Atkinson, who's been a head coach. He wants him more than... Monty Williams or Nick Nurse, who are uh, were, were people thrown around in the Bucks search. Giannis wants that. We've heard Book has Kevin Young as a stamp of approval. I mean, some of this is no surprise, right? The age can, uh, gap is, is just less wide. It's narrower. I'm sure Booker can relate to Kevin Young in a way that he wouldn't be able to relate to Doc Rivers, even though Doc Rivers is a former player. Who cares? He's 50-something, you know? Um... If not older than that, I actually don't know how old Doc Rivers is. But either way, you know, he's he's old enough to be Booker's father, not not his teammate, right? Um, and so that's part of it. But I think the other part is just the Darvin Ham, thought to be a, a, a pretty aggressive schemer. And I think that's a lot of what the Lakers have had advantages in in this stuff. Nick Nurse himself was a replacement on staff, very much in the mold of what Kevin Young would be for this Suns team when Dwayne Casey was dismissed from the Raptors. 
Nick Nurse rose, had been a head coach in the D-League, had been a head coach overseas, and then rose to be the head coach and, and won a championship. And it's like, yes, that same summer, they also just so happened to make a trade for Kawhi Leonard. And yes, the Warriors had injuries and everything else. They made a trade for Marcus Gasol and all this different stuff. They went all in in a variety of ways. I'm sure Dwayne Casey probably feels like, well, what, what were you waiting on with me? Why did I have to coach DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry for a decade? You could have let me have the, the Kawhi year. But, you know, time things happen when they happen. But time and again, that is the reminder that we get. Even Steve Kerr, once upon a time, was not a, a guy with head coaching experience, was a little bit of an unorthodox hire, and he came in and, and brought creativity and a new voice, and the rest is history. The dude's one of the best head coaches to ever do the job. So that's where I come from. Relation to the star players, creativity, freshness of perspective, all of that stuff. I think the risk is higher, but I think the reward could be bigger. That'll wrap us up. Aaron Edwards will be here to close out the week on Friday. So hit follow or subscribe to get that show and every other single one we do for the rest of the offseason in your feed for free every Monday through Friday. In the meantime, check out Locked On Sports Today. That show's available wherever you get podcasts. Also free, also great. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.